reflection on human dignity. And I'm going to read to you from Romans 11, 11. Do not despise those who stumble. Again I ask, did they stumble so as to fall? Of course not. Their stumbling allows salvation to come to pagan nations and this, in turn, will stir up the jealousy of Israel. If Israel's shortcoming made the world rich, if the pagan nations grew rich with what they lost, what will happen when Israel is restored? Listen to me, you who are not Jews. I am spending myself as an apostle to the pagan nations. But I hope my ministry will be successful enough to awaken the jealousy of these of my race. And finally, to save some of them. If the world made peace with God when they remain apart, what will it be when they are welcome? Nothing less than a passing from death to life. When the first fruits are consecrated to God, the whole is consecrated. If the roots are holy, so will be the branches. Some branches have been cut off from the olive tree, while you, as a wild olive tree, have been grafted in their stead, and you are benefiting from their roots and sap. Now, therefore, do not be proud and despise the branches, because you do not support the roots. The roots support you. You may say, they cut off the branches to graft me. Well and good, but they were cut off because they did not believe, while you stand by faith. Then do not pride yourself on this too much. Rather be aware, if God did not spare the natural branches, even less will He spare you. So when we speak about dignity, one thing comes to mind, and it is, we are the vessel of clay, that carries the treasure of God, the Holy Spirit. Therefore, we, you probably imagine the level of dignity that we should uh, live within. Because um, our life in God is a sacred life. It's not just a transient pagan life that is only focused and occupied in transitory events. We are created by God and chosen by God to be His children. That means eternal children, children that will not die because Jesus has conquered death and has given us life, eternal life. So if we understand this mystery, then we know that we have a pretty high responsibility in living up to that name, children of God. That means we have to be perfectly in line with what that means and contains and demands. And to start with, the first thing we have to do is to obey God. And how do we do that? By acknowledging His law. And how do we obey His law? By loving Him. Because we will not like to obey His law just because we have to, because it's an obligation and a responsibility. We would like to obey His law because we love Him. It's like children when they obey the parents. They will not like to obey the parents because they are afraid of them and know that they have to obey them because otherwise they get punished or they don't get what they want. That wouldn't be the right love of a child to the parents. But a child that is good loves the parents and therefore obeys them because he loves them or, or, or she loves them. And this is exactly what dignity is about. Dignity is about dignifying the love of God 
that fear of God dignifying our lives, acknowledging that we are vessels of clay that carry the treasure, as St. Paul calls us. So let's go into the ground. How do we, how do we conceive dignity in our bones, in our flesh, in our day-to-day -day life, in our little life? I would say today we live a culture that is absolutely immoral in so many ways. A culture that is uh, godless. A culture that can care less about obedience to God in any aspect. As, as a matter of fact, is anti-God. So, when we are the people of God in the midst of a world like this, and it's not like the world has been any different before, but we have today a massive globalized world meaning all the worldly ways are in our face through the media, fashion, the culture is all permitted with all this decadence and then the world that had been always so far from people, from the people of God especially today is in our face, is in our soup because we are globalized and also the, the, the means of communication, this is the era of communication is so developed that we are not able to escape from whatever is taking place in the world, regardless of where we go. So, we need to do something else besides acknowledging the law of God in order to survive in this world that we live in today. And that is, we have to be so faithful to God in spite of it all, in spite of the culture we live in, in spite of all the tendencies and influences and voices that speak to us from everywhere, from every angle, from the world, we have to be so strong and simple to understand that. So I give you an example that is basic. Fashion is an invitation to live up to date with whatever the world is telling you to do. Whatever the world and designers, for example, are telling you to wear. So today, yellow short mini skirts are on for summer and then women are attracted to wear that and uh, so they wear it because it's fashionable not because it is related in any way to dignity it's just fashionable it's in so dignity is not there there's no worry about that it's something that is in and then if you don't wear that kind of fashion at this time that is on then then you are not in so therefore for you to be on, you have to be in, if you understand what I mean. So now, dignity is not in and is not on. Dignot dignity is God himself, so therefore it's not in or on. Dignity is life itself, so it doesn't have to be played around by any mean of a human activity, because it comes directly from God. So now dignity is the call of God to each one of us. We have to acknowledge how we are going to dress. We have to wear clothes that is dignifying. We cannot scandalize anyone. We cannot dress up just to seduce because a lot of the fashion today, if not all, is just seductive and it has to be sexy. It has to have a sex appeal in order to be commercial and appealable to people. You know, people will not like, uh, especially women and also men today, because men are so feminine today, they are turning to a feminine masculinity because of fashion. And so if it, if it is not seductive, if it is, it is, if, it, if it is not sexy enough, it's not acceptable. It's not, it's nothing that will sell. It's not commercial. So now, if we understand these dangers, uh, we have to take them not as fanaticals, not as scrupulous people, not as someone that is seeing evil everywhere and seen everywhere. No, as people that are dignified, that are, are looking for the most important presentation of a vessel of God, which is dignity. And that is so basic. So how will I wear my clothes? I will wear my clothes in a coherent, moderate, prudent way. I don't want to scandalize anyone, anybody. I don't want to sell my body to anyone and exhibit myself 
and expose my anatomy to anybody so that pe so I would be attracted to people and accepted by people. That, that is pretty close to prostitution anyway and exhibitionism. So we, we don't do that. That is not any, any way, in any way, dignity. It's, it's, that is not a way of dignifying my life or the life of anybody. So it is very important to realize that we have to dress according to our morals, our values, our principles, our faith, according to God. And that doesn't mean that we are going to wear habits. No, it means that we are to be prudent. That's what it is. Prudent, coherent, and uh, sober. And this is the call of faith. This is probably a scandal for people today when they hear a talk like this. But I tell you, this is exactly the truth. That's what we have to do. Why there is so much rape out there? Why well, there is so much crime out there against women, for example? When you look at it, a lot of the cases of rape in the streets, occasional rape in the streets, are because of seductive dressings. You know, obviously, if a, if a, if a loose madman is in the street, he's not going to discriminate between a woman that is dressed seductive and a woman that is dressed as a nun. He will rape the woman anyways, because it's a psycho path or something like that. I'm not speaking at those extremes, but I'm talking about a regular assault, sexual assault, and, uh, and, and, and people that become really, really heavy against women in the streets. And it, a lot of the problems that we have today is because of the way we dress. That's the way it is. So now, we have to start looking at dignity in the way we dress. But also, we have to start looking at dignity in the way we express ourselves. You know, a lot of people are really uh, not paying attention to the way they speak. See, they have horrifying vocabulary. They speak anything that comes to their minds, they just speak it out. They just spill it out. It's like nowadays, it's fashionable to be expressive. And the way you express yourself, it doesn't matter how nasty your language could be. As long as you are so open and you are so expressive and you just let it out. And this is the way all these movie stars and rock stars and fashion models and multimillionaires, that's the way they speak. A lot of them are really nasty people and they speak horrible and people find that funny. Some of the lyrics in the music today are horrifying and, pe and are glamorized. This horror of language is glamorized and they speak in horrible things singing horrible things and inviting people to do horrible things, sometimes even murder. So even rape is promoted in some of the music today. So now it's important to, to watch what we say, what comes out of our mouth. It's, it's important to watch our conversations, it's the way we share our life with others, even with the family, especially with the family, because we are responsible to raise children or to be parents, uh, and, and to be a family of God that is giving a testimony in our church, in the community, at work, in, in life in general, everywhere we are. So we have to watch our language. We have to watch the choice of words. We have to watch the way we express ourselves and the way we deliver our ideas, the way we deliver our needs, even going to a bank teller. We have to be careful as to how we, we address ourselves, how we treat others. All of that, casual encounters in the street with people. We should be kind and we, have, we, sh we should have the right choice of words that come from the love of God. That is part of our dignity. We have to be also careful to remember that this body is, is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So we have to watch our way of eating. We have to watch the way we treat this body. We have to treat this body as a vessel of God. So therefore, we have to be careful not to eat things that are going to hurt us. Gluttony is a big sin today in this society. It, it, a great percentage of humanity is suffering of gluttony. And you know, gluttony is a demon. It's, 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 it's exactly a legion. It's, it's a force, a spiritual force that destroys our health. Because what? The enemy wants to kill our time, to kill our time in the flesh, to, to, to bring us prematurely into the spiritual world and killing our health. 
So we shorten our lives because we do not care about this vessel that is the temple of the Lord. So we have to also dignify our way of eating. That's, that is part of dignity. We have to dignify our way of resting. Some people are so hyperactive they do not rest properly because they spend so much more time at work and out there anxious trying to achieve their goals and running from one place to another and at the end they end up sick because they don't rest. So those excesses are taking away your dignity. And also you have to acknowledge the responsibility you have with your neighbor. You're responsible for your family, your friends and, and humanity in general for the church. You're responsible. So every act, everything you do is affecting others. So dignity is about caring for others, caring for humanity. See, when you are in the street and you throw, you know, rubbish on the street, you're hurting someone. Someone is going to have to pick it up for you. And why would you do that? Why would you throw... Some people think that is like uh, people that are really stiff, you know, and strict and old. People that care about keeping the streets clean and things like that. Some people spit on the streets and they are sick. And they transmit disease to other people just by spitting on the street. And, and all of these things are not part of our dignity. That is absolutely the opposite. So we have to watch all of that. We have to care about the neighbor. You don't want to do anything that is going to affect somebody else. See, you go into a toilet, a public toilet. You have to make sure you leave it impeccable when you walk out, uh, away. Because someone else is going to come after you. And you don't want to go into a public toilet and find a mess in that toilet because someone didn't care about you. So you have to do that too. And that is part of the dignity. See, when you're traveling in, in places where you need to keep silent, where you need to be, uh, you need to be sober in everything you're doing, it's, you, know, you notice how sometimes you fly an airplane and you're sitting there and some people can care less about your peace, about your space, about the time in your flight and they are speaking so loud and doing things outrageous that are taking everybody's peace. See, because there is no dignity there. There is no care about your neighbor, no care about anybody. And many times we do things that put people in danger. So many times. See, so driving sometimes, flying uh, airplanes, a lot of pilots drink and fly. We, you, a lot of alcoholic pilots today. And how many accidents are like that because of alcoholism? drug addiction, uh, over smoking, uh, uh, medication, a lot of people are under heavy medication and they go out into traffic and also doctors, doctors that are alcoholics, doctors that are not in shape for some reason, uh, they are going out there to the hospitals to operate on people, to diagnose people and they are not in shape to do that. Any type of occasion we are responsible. So many priests that are, don't have any dignity and they don't care about the church, they don't care about the commitment of priesthood and they scandalize the church and scandalize humanity by all the horrors they get involved with and the scandals they produce. You know that. I mean, it's very common today to see all these scandals of the clergy and the religious. All of that is lack of dignity. So now, the Lord is asking us to line up to understand what is it that we need to do as children of God. It's not as simple as you're saying, I'm a child of God, I go to church, I go to Mass, I pray, I go to confession, I give alms to the poor. That's not enough. We have to do much more than that. We have to shape up. We have to straighten up. We have to do what we have to do is to become real children of God. So I have to dignify my life. I have to be a person that understands dignity because understand meticulosity, understand a high discipline. So let's ask the Lord to bless us in a special way so that we can dignify our lives and dignify so many areas of our life. Every single responsibility has to do with dignity. Even the way you choose your politicians, that has to be with dignity. You cannot choose politicians that are against your faith, against humanity. You have to understand that life is, is really, really uh, demanding from us a lot demanding from us uh, so much because we need to, to, to be responsible in society also. So let's ask the Lord to give us this wisdom. Let's ask the Lord to open our eyes and to, and to focus on true dignity. 
is so important. We are the example and the testimony for children in the midst of all of this. We are the example for people that are looking at us that don't even know us. And the way we hold ourselves is the way we should do. Uh, in the way we should present what, what dignity is, just by the, our personal testimony. I'm going to ask the Lord for His Word, so that we can uh, close these reflections in the spirit of the Word. And I'm reading to you from Galatians uh, 5.13, and it says, True freedom. You, brothers and sisters, were called to enjoy freedom. I am not speaking of that freedom which gives free reign to the desires of the flesh, but of that which makes you slaves of one another through love. For the whole law is summed up in this sentence, you should love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and tear each other to pieces, be careful lest you all perish. Therefore I say to you, walk according to the spirit that do not give way to the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh war against the spirit, and the desires of the spirit are opposed to the flesh. Both are in conflict with each other, so that you cannot do everything you would like. But when you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Amen.